Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Business Spotlight. I am Scott McMeans with Action Coach, and I am here today with Leslie Yerkes from the Catalyst Consulting Group. And we're going to get a chance to talk about her successes and her rise to owning her own business. Uh, in order to do that, I need to introduce you to Leslie. So the camera and the microphone are yours, Leslie. Introduce yourself. And tell us a little bit about your business. Absolutely. Good morning. Um, we are in the week post Memorial Day. And <laughs> on Memorial Day, my company celebrates its birthday because Memorial Day was the day that I launched. And I always smile because everybody else was enjoying a day off and I was ripping and raring to go and no one was in their office. So 37 years later, this Memorial Day, we started 37 years I didn't wow. dream to be 37 years as an entrepreneur, business owner, self-employed. I wanted to make it through the first year. And then after that goal, through the fifth year, when I got to the 10th year, it was like glory, hallelujah. But every year in business is a challenge. Every mm -hmm. year in business is a joy. Every year in business is a opportunity to reinvent yourself because you might get better at what you're doing, but the market and environment around you constantly changes as do the needs. So it has been a wonderful roller coaster ride that has taken me around the world, met cool people, cool places, done wondrous things. And here I am 37 years later, still eager, anxious, and raring to go in the week after Memorial Day. I love it. I love it. So <laughs> around the world, met some cool people. Who was the first person that comes to mind when you think about success? So many. I keep a short list of mm -hmm. leadership. Leadership is my personal passion. It's the essential ingredient to organizational well-being. I'm a consultant in the field of organizational behavior, organizational development, change management, a field that when I got my graduate degree from Case Western Reserve here in Cleveland, uh, no one knew about this. No one had it in their job mm -hmm. title. There were no departments. So I was in at the foundation in the beginning. And so I keep a short list of leaders and I've met some wonderful one, and you would you would think of who are the most famous ones. Yes, I take my inspiration from them, but it's the leaders that are in the trenches every day, creating healthy work environments and healthy work relationships that help to create people's future. But the one person that comes to mind when I wrote down was um, an individual who selected to mentor me. I was new to Cleveland, Ohio, new to business ownership, um, young female with a soft science degree, I was not like anybody in the rooms that I sat in. And this woman's son and I met in a leadership program and he said, you've got to meet my mom. She's a remarkable female business owner. And all of 28 years old, uh, this woman took me on as a consultant to her company, as a coach to her personally, which she did not need. Wow. And she reached down with her hand and pulled me into every organization and onto every board she sat on. Um, here we are 37 years later. Uh, she's retired to Naples, Florida. Um, I consider her still a best friend. Um, I think of her every single day. We still correspond. But one day I said to her, how do I repay your kindness? And she said, Leslie, at some point in your life, you are going to have a, a vast network and you're going to be very successful and people are going to want your time. And she said, when people call to ask you to go out for coffee, to tell you what they're doing, and perhaps you could lend them a hand, you can repay my kindness by just saying yes. And so for all of these years, whenever anybody asks for a helping hand or a coffee or can you give me your insights on? I just say yes. And still to this day, every one of those coffees is as a benefit to me as it is to the other person. This region of ours is a wonderful, kind, generous place where you do good work and good work comes back to you. So hats off to Pat Mead, who was president of Realty One Relocation all those many years ago. Uh, still a close friend and um, special person in my life. And Cleveland became a much easier place for me to grow a business in due to someone like Pat Mead. And there were so many of those people in my life. 
I love it. What an amazing story. And the, the best part about it was you took the mantle and you continue to run with it. And the, the note I wrote down is I <laughs> Pat reached down and pulled me up. And now I repay her kindness by saying yes. And I, I, I think that is tantamount to being successful, showcasing your success and sharing it with others. And that's that's the spirit of what we're trying to do on these uh, spotlight series is allow people to understand there's so much more to learn, even though you think you know, you know everything. There's so much more to give, even though you haven't given everything yet. So thank you for, for sharing that. That's a wonderful story. And I'm sure Pat is very proud uh, to be a part of your success. Um, I would like to know, now that we're kind of in this mode, what's the biggest learnings that you've had as a CEO of your own organization? Like, what is it that you've developed over the course of 37 years? What is what is it that you've learned that you'd like to pass on? The learnings never stop, by the way. At the point <laughs> that you stop learning, I think you die in some way, shape, or form. Um, life requires us to keep on learning. Um, I noted a couple of them. One was what is challenging and painful and looks like resistance is always a gift and a lesson. So mine is get through it, shake it off, and grab the lesson and run with it. So I am i don't have a lot of fear. I don't dwell on a lot. I forgive very easily. I pick myself up, dust myself off, and grab the lesson and run. And if you don't learn the lesson the first time, it's returned to you over and over and over again. Um, Love it. Get good advisors. Surround yourself with people that champion your passion and your mission. Um, pick them wisely. Pick them because they align with your values. You're going to want to have them. Here I am 37 years later. I still have my original um, insurance broker who's retired, but his son runs the business. But when I needed him in this past week because I sold a home and canceled an insurance, he picked up the phone to call me because he said, you're mine. You're still mm. mine. So, you know, I'm a good advisor to people, desperately loyal. Don't leave them when times get tough. Find the same for yourself. Um, this business ownership is a lifestyle. And if you don't learn to balance it out and get yourself in the picture, your family in the picture, um, you will burn out regularly. Burnout takes away your best capabilities. Mm -hmm. It will steal some years of your life. Here I am. 37 years later, advancing towards an age that people would normally retire. I'm an unretired. I've got 10 more years of goodness in me before I start doing things that are more of a advocation. Um, it's because you take care of yourself and you found a way to balance it. I think the last lesson too is know very clearly why you're going into business. If it's to get away from a bad boss or because you think you can make lots of money or there's a lot of autonomy, um, really check your motivations. You have to have a passion for whatever you're doing because you'll do it in good times and you'll do it in really tough times. And your family needs to support you and understand that there will be sacrifices along. People have always said to me, oh, Leslie, we so admire you and we want everything you have, the autonomy, the, the perceived power, the perceived wealth. And I say perceived because people have in their minds what they see. You get to travel, you write books, you meet important people. And I said, all those things are the icing on the cake. The cake is the hard work. And by the way, along the way, I made choices and sacrifices. Didn't marry, didn't have children. Mine was an all-consuming passion. Peter Drucker would say, monomaniac with a mission. That's the definition of <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, it comes with sacrifice. So it's it's not a cakewalk, guys. It's a choice. It's a lifestyle. And not everybody is made for it. So you have to know that you're all in and your family has to support you in the same same, same way. But once every day is a new day. Every day is a new opportunity. Um, every day the market changes and you'll have to reinvent yourself. I have a plan A, B, and C in my pocket at all times. Love that. The plan A, B, and C. That's good. One thing I, I really appreciate you telling people is the values part. I, I kind of have this little flow chart I wrote here. Values, motivation, family support, sacrifice. It all kind of funnels into what you're doing. If you are going to start a business and you aren't sure of your values, 
your foundation is going to be so unstable because at some point you're going to be chasing things you should not be chasing. You're going to be saying and doing things you really don't believe in. If it's when you find your values and here's the interesting thing about values. They're always yours to have, but they can move up and down in priority based on situations. Right? So I, I believe the core values that people hold, it's part of their identity. It's part of who they are as a person. And once you push things to the side to not sacrifice, but push things aside that, that you value in order to get something that you think you value, you've lost a really interesting battle. Yeah. It's only when you get back to that core center of, okay, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. These are the type of people I want to work with. And it's perfectly fine to fire a customer if they don't agree or align to your values, because it's only going to be a struggle from that point moving forward. That's yeah. just my thought about it. My grandmother had lots of coin sayings that she might not have coined, but 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 shared sure. them. When you're in business, these these cliches come up and they're so they are truisms. And she said, My friend, you're either going to stand for something or fall for everything. Figure that out. Figure that out. Um, a popular author, Brene Brown, Dare to Lead, one of her best books. She challenges people to very immediately name their top three values. If you can identify the thing that defines every decision, every action, who you are and what your worth is immediately and what you'll walk away from, you're not clear on your values. You may have more than three, but you should know your top three, which are, as you said, the determinant of who do I spend my time with? Where do I spend my time? They exactly. become more and more important the more successful your business becomes. They contribute to your mm -hmm. success. And what I find here, 37 years later, my entire reputation is based on those values because it, it isn't because people knew my values written down on a website. It's because my actions were congruent. Yeah, that's that's the key that, that makes it all work, right? Is words are one thing, actions are the, are the, are the concrete by which foundations are made. So- yeah, you have to do the right thing, right? It's one thing to say it on your website. It's another thing to do it. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here as far as the conversation. I'm interested to learn what are some of the biggest mistakes you may have made as a business owner? Easily. All of them are related to finances. So <laughs> the majority of small business owners, and we're still creating small businesses at a record level, uh, during COVID, more women left their jobs to go into business mm -hmm. to have some flexibility. And we are a major contributor to the economy of the United States. And yet, 85% of them fail before their first year. And of the 15% that succeed, 50% of those fail before the fifth year. So it's it's a steep hill to climb. Um, fortunately, knock on wood here, I'll say 37 years later, none of my mistakes killed the business. None of the mistakes the employees made killed the business. Some of them were really, really serious and we had to recover from them. Um, but mine was many small business owners are expert in their technical field and not necessarily mm -hmm. in business operations or finances or IT. This is where you surround yourself with good advisors. I now know finances very, very well. But I'm not fiscally conservative. I'm a risk taker or else I wouldn't be in business. So mm -hmm. I don't spend as much time deliberating over an investment, a new piece of equipment. Please don't show, sell me another timeshare. I've got five, you know, best <laughs> salespeople in the world. Um, careful, careful, careful. The mistakes I've made have been to quickly, too quickly move on a, a, a not a, a chunk of change because yeah. I always have the confidence that I'll race and find the next chunk of change. Um, my parents worried I will give away my last dollar to someone who needs it because I have the confidence I'll go find another dollar. Um, there is a sense of generosity and abundance that comes with me and a high sense of risk taking. So all of my mistakes always created stress around the finances um, mm -hmm. I work myself out of it every single time. However, I would say to you, as you age and you look towards the years when you've got to have something put aside, 
I wish that I had kicked in with a little more um, sort of stewardship of the finances to match my risk taking. Um, uh, okay. So the big lesson there is every single person has flat sides and competencies and capabilities they don't have. You have to round them out to be successful in business. And that everything about leadership strengths is paradoxical. For your greatest strength, my risk taking is one of them. I needed to balance that out with stewardship. Um, for mm. every great strength you have that contributes to your ability to make wondrous things happen, there is an opposing force that if you only added to it, it would in fact create greater capability. So I, I all the time go, what are my paradoxes? So what's the balance that I need to add to it? I got mm -hmm. here on my strengths. Marshall Goldsmith wrote a book, What Got You Here Won't Keep You Here. What yep. do I, what paradoxically do I need to add to it? So uh, fortunately, all of the mistakes were around um, spending money when perhaps I could have been a little more conservative. Okay, good to know. But I love the idea that you understand and recognize that, to your point, there's a risk taking and then there's a stewardship. There's a yin and a yang. There's an opposite. And your one comment I thought was very profound in that if you recognize what you're really good at, and you recognize what you're not very good at, but you strengthen what you're good at, it'll overtake what you're not so good at. Yes, and then surround yourself. My right hands in the yeah. office were always highly deliberative perfectionist folks who had no risk taking. So when I asked them to do something, they'd come back with 20 questions that frustrated me, but their work product that I asked them to do, which was always around finances and operations, was mm -hmm. 10 times better than me. And I love that they slowed me down and did that um, because they would stress out if I did something unwise with the company's um, resources. I chose not to stress them out and it was a bit of a boundary for me. Some of my best right hands, you know, straightened me out really, really well. <laughs> oh, that's good. And sometimes you need that, right? And that's, that's what... As, as a consultant and as, as a business coach, we talk constantly about building the right team, right? It's It used to be back in the day, just get the right people on the bus. Now it's so vitally important to get the right people on the bus, but put them in the right seat. Yes. And then put them in the right seat facing in the right direction so they can have the conversations necessary with the people that are either next to them, behind them, in front of them. So there's a collaborative approach to making sure this bus goes exactly where it's supposed to be. It's taken such a different ride over the years where, yeah, just make sure you have good people around you. Okay. But what if the good person is in the wrong spot? You need to make sure that you have people that, to your point, are the balance of your, your good and your bad right? Your strengths and your paradoxes, or however you put that in, in, in your own mindset. That's a huge piece for a business owner. Yeah. Because they, to your point, um, they're very good technically, but they're not very good at running a business. So we need to teach them how to do that. It sounds like you did an excellent job of surrounding yourself. Before I, we go, I want to ask you, is there anything that you would like to tell the audience as far as how they can get in touch with you, what your offer might be if they want to work with you? How would we get um, somebody intrigued enough to give Leslie a call? Well, thank you, Scott. That's a nice thing to open the door and say, because 37 years later, I'm a lot of repeat customers and referral customers, but I will tell you, COVID upset the market greatly oh, yeah. and reinventing I'm doing all over again. So my website is really pretty simple. It's my name, leslieyerkes.com. Huh. The website contains just about everything you need, lists of clients, bios, what we do for a living. Um, I work with individuals, groups, and organizations. I help um, support other people's radical success. Um, <laughs> I'm people and process. I've seen and done it all. Um, I love what I do. And just helping organizations thrive. And in little and large ways, whether it's a strategic planning process, whether it's the development of leadership and managers, whether it's figuring out how to hire and retain the best, whether it's right now figuring out how are you going to formulate your work? i.e. we've come through COVID, we've been remote, we've been hybrid. What are we going to be that is best for the customer, best for our workforce, best for our product or service? How are we going to do that? 
And managers and leaders really need to think this through wisely. And their skill sets and habits have got to change and adapt to this new way we're approaching our work. So I touch everything that's around people and process. Love it. I love it. The people in the process, that's eliminating the chaos and allowing the right people, as I said, to get on the right or sit in the right seat on the bus and make the business thrive. A lot of buzzwords, a lot of great things, Leslie. This has been a great conversation. Um, I have one question for you. Okay. If you were to sit down on a park bench next to an 18-year-old Leslie, what would you say to an 18-year-old wow. Leslie Yerkes? Wow. Wow. Um. That's that's a big question. Um, <laughs> because I I've been fortunate. It's not always been easy. Um, I've just carved my own path. A foreign exchange student, studied overseas, backpacked around the world. I have the confidence that people are basically good, well-intended, able to learn if they want to, and together we can do wondrous things. I'm also very realistic to say there's hardship in the world and not so good stuff too. Um, so I'm not Pollyanna-ish. My, one of my many nicknames is Sergeant Mary Poppins. I make uh, things uh. get done fun, but I get them done. And I've, I've done work in really dark and hard places. Um, here I am later in life. And I would say, trust yourself. Mm -hmm. um, right now, some of the conversations that are swirling around me um, our people are really using the word agency, which is give other people agency. And in the 1980s, it might've been called empowerment, but to find one's agency, which is one's use of power in the world and yeah. one's ability to assert their voice and stand up for things is really, really important. And does your agency and your sense of your worth come from the external things that happen in your life? Or have you codified that? And is it an internal, strong mm -hmm. foundation? Worth is not the feedback you get every day. It's just feedback. And if you tie yourself mm. to the day-to-day -day feedback and others' opinion of you, which is their perception, your self-confidence will go up and down. If you get clear on who you are, what you are, what you stand for, what will you will stand up for, and the value you add, and there's a lot of discipline and generosity to that, no one can shake your understanding of your value and worth, and you can walk through the hardest times in the world. So I would say, trust yourself. I used to spend a lot of time dwelling on reflecting backwards. What would I do differently more? Um, and I spend a lot of time visiting. I love the future. I'm, I still do both of those things because out of the reflection comes the lesson and in the, in the visiting comes the opportunity, but be here now, experience what's right in front of me. So that's what I'd say to the 18 year old. I love it. Be that, here. Well, being, being present, recognizing your own agency and the ability to empower others through your agency, I think is incredibly well said in the last few moments. So thank you for sharing, sharing that with everybody. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You start my morning off with all these compliments, Scott. It's just <laughs> what a way. And isn't that what we're supposed to do in the world, which is mine is spend your energy uplifting others, be the wind between beneath their wings and let them fly. I don't carry people. I don't push. I don't pull. I don't make them do things. I help them find their strengths. So, and then I help them mm. find the resiliency to to plow through because life isn't easy. It isn't fair, but no. get up every day and play the game. I well, love it. I love it. What a great way to end the conversation, Leslie. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. And I encourage everybody, uh, click the links that will be in the description down below, get a chance to connect with Leslie. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you, B, you know, for having me. And I'm so glad to learn that we're in the same community. Our paths are going to cross now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next time on the Business Spotlight.